sax.co.uk doing another comparison video for you guys out there that don't have the opportunity to get to such a large establishment as this and you don't know what you're buying. So let me tell you a bit about, this is a requested video and it's about kind of what your cheapest option, so if you're buying your first sax and you want to get into it, and what your cheapest options for horns are, I have here the three cheapest that you can get in this shop. Um, and that does not include the vibrato. People think those um, plastic saxophones are cheap. I've done a comparison video on various different vibratos. Um, so you could check that out. I'll link to that in the de description box or it might be up above my head right now. Um, but yeah, they are actually really expensive now. So you might as well get uh, a full on one because they don't sound great, those vibratos. I have here a, I think it's, uh, let me pronounce this right. Is it Saxu? Saxu? Yeah. Saksu, with double K. Oh, sak Sakyusu, Sakyusu, which is, I gather, the sax.co.uk's own brand, and that's why it's so cheap here. So this comes in at um, £300, uh, which is really good value, to be honest, because the next two are for both £600, so literally double the price. Um, I've had a quick pre-blow, <laughs> if you excuse the term, before filming this video. Um, you can hear the difference, but I quite like this guy, I think, for the value. Let's have a little listen. So what I particularly noticed when I started playing this, and granted I've got a nice mouthpiece on here, so that's something else you might want to think about. Um, getting a cheap sax but getting a really decent mouthpiece. I've done various videos on my favourite mouthpieces, so I'll, I'll link that above my head now as well. Um, I'm playing on my Rosso Studio Jazz here, and I've got the good guys at Legere have given me one of these lovely um, plasticky reed things that last forever. I can't say enough good things about these reeds, actually. Um, I don't use them on all my horns, so it depends on what mouthpiece you play on and your kind of setup, but I really like them on the, on the Studio Jazz. So, I've got a decent mouthpiece. What I find with this is that the low tones are actually really nice, really easy to get out. I can get a nice subtone, um, which, sorry to be patronizing if you're not sure what that is. It's a difference, um, it's a difference in tone in your bottom register. So here's not subtone. And here's subtone, which is a little bit fluffier and warmer. So hopefully you can hear the difference there. And that's very easy to get out on this Sakyusu, Sakyusu. Top tones aren't so easy. Tuning's quite good. Um, tuning stays quite nice for you, considering it's a really cheap sax. I did struggle trying to get my altissimos out of it. Um, so. So, um, uh, yeah, I have to work quite hard for them. They're not going to happen there on their own, which I guess, you know, if you're a beginner sax, you're not going to use them anyway. Um, but if you were thinking, God, what's the point in upgrading to a professional saxophone, and perhaps you've watched my videos on those, I might put one above my head now, uh, and you're wondering what that's all about and why you would spend, let's say, 3000 3500 as opposed to 300 that's the kind of thing. And also, um, I find that some of my notes aren't coming out straight away and it's because I'm being too light on the touch. So you have to be quite heavy handed with it. And a couple of the placements, like I'm, I use a lot of Bisque, which is my B flat here, and they're quite far away and I find that quite awkward as well. So there's a lot of kind of action stuff that's a bit uncomfortable for me. Uh, we'll give it a quick toot um, and I'll put on the screen what time this is at um, so that you can switch between them. So look at the screen now, this is the time, and here's a little bit of a toot. Like that. Um, so you can see roughly what it's like. Let's move on. So, Sakyusu, I quite like you. You got a thumbs up from Chez, you're all right, you're all right. Quite mellow, which I don't know, maybe that's quite a good thing. So let's move on to the Trevor James horn. I'm going to move on to this second because I've talked about it before. I used it as quite a good sax to take you into intermediate as well. So I, this is quite close to my heart because I had this saxophone until I was about grade five-ish level. So intermediate before I went on to a pro sax. 
So this with a decent mouthpiece, I think can take you quite far. Let's have a little listen to the difference and then I'll give you a quick, sorry, I'm having a bit of a faff time here. Faffaroonie, faffaroonie, faffaroonie. Okay, let's have a little listen to this guy and see what he can do. <laughs> So immediately you'll probably hear that it's brighter. Um, I feel like it sits under my hands better. The action is a bit easier. Let's try those top tones that I had problems with before. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot easier for me. So it doesn't, yeah, just go like one of them splits. But yeah, I, I would, if I had this on a gig, I'd give it a go. I'd go on to those artist modes. They might not come out first time, but um, I'd certainly give it a go. Um, so about to be on the screen is the time that we are at. Um, oh, by the way, the tuning on this again, quite good. I'm kind of skimming over it because I've already played one of these in a previous video when I was comparing um, sort of cheap versus intermediate versus uh, pro saxes. And that's popping above my head just now in case you want to reference that. Um, and I classed this as more of an intermediate, I think. Um, so yeah, let's have a little listen to what he can do. Uh, let's try it, sorry. I was just thinking of a line which goes into altissimo so I can see if it hits. Uh, yeah, so I, I can get that, that was a G. I can get that top G out fairly easily, but I'm, I'm a little bit on tender hooks, like, oh, is it gonna split or is it gonna work? Um, but yeah, Trevor James, so I haven't said the price. This guy is the classic, Horn Classic number two. Wonder what happened to number one. <laughs> and this comes in at 600, so it is double the price. You could buy two of your Sakyusu, you could buy a tenor and an alto for the price of one of these. So you gotta be pretty sure that to you, it, it, it sounds better and is easier to play. I, it's got a question mark over that for me. I'm not sure that it's enough. Um, now this is the Elkhart. Uh, again, it was the same sort of price and I was drawn to it because this is the one I always used to recommend to my students as being the cheapest. Um, however, it's not really anymore. And I guess that's probably because it's gained popularity and they've been able to rack the price up a little bit. So this is the same price as that Trevor James, uh, I think. Yeah, 600. Um, and this is Elkhart Deluxe. Let me just check that I'm in line. Just a reminder, this is my studio uh, jazz, Rosso Studio Jazz mouthpiece and a Leger reed. And this uh, rather tarnished looking ligature makes quite a difference as well. The Vander and Optimum ligature, all these little things make quite a lot of difference. So I would highly advise you watch my video on mouthpieces as well because the mouthpiece that comes with it won't necessarily make it sound like this. Let's see what this guy can do. Um, I mean, this is much brighter than the other two, I think. Um, again, the sub's nice and easy. Let's check out the top and see what it can do. Okay, here we go. It came out pretty easily. I was like, ah, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? So it did. Um, yeah, uh, I stand by my, what I've said my, to my students, this is a good horn. For a beginner, I think it's a nice horn. Tuning's not amazing. That top one is a bit ropey. Uh, that's B that I'm looking at. I, I'll often go to B because that's definitely my weak zone, uh, especially on tenor actually. Um, and by the way, you could cross-reference this to tenor. So same sort of principles apply between the two. I've gone for alto because I know a lot of beginners start on alto. Um, let's have a listen. So on the screen, we should be coming up with the time. Let's have a listen to a bit of this. So you can switch back between those three timings and see what you really think about the difference. Uh, what shall I play on this guy? Let's do a bit of jazz. <laughs> Nice, I like it. If I was gonna buy one of these, 
I'd probably just go with the cheapest. I don't know. I'd be really interested to see what you think. So comment, please do comment below. And if this video is useful, do give it a thumbs up as well. Um, makes uh, these videos a bit more worthwhile. <laughs> people feedback and say, yes, that was useful for me. Uh, and let me know where you're from as well. I've had a few people in like Mexico and like Brisbane and wherever um, getting in touch, which is just really cool. It's really nice to know there's a saxophone community across the world that's watching these videos and that they're helpful for you. But yeah, for me, I'd save my 300 quid and go buy like, I don't know, we should spend 300 quid quite easily in a day. I'd buy some nice clothes, I'd go out for a meal, test some champagne, and uh, just get the cheapest horn because I don't think there's enough of a difference in there. But um, I'd be interested to see what you think. So please do comment below and I hope to see you in the next video. There will be more comparison stuff coming up, hitting your way soon. Thanks for watching guys, see you. Bye bye. So I am serious about this subscribing thing. Hit that button, do it. Do it, or I'll drop you back. I will, I will, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll... <gasps>